along with Stanley Park, uh, Capilano Suspension Bridge was the first paid attraction uh, in Vancouver, and it's been in existence since 1889. It does have a very interesting history. The um, property was first uh, purchased by a Scotsman, and um, he built a lodge here, and I think he decided that it would be nice to get to the other side. Uh, and since there was a lot of uh, Indians living in the area, he became friendly with them and they determined a way that they could get across this canyon. So they built uh, the suspension bridge. They built the bridge on this side, they lowered it into the canyon, then they had a team of horses on the other side who hauled it up and made it suspend across the canyon. Well, I always say it's a thrill and it's something that they'll never forget. And that uh, I think a lot of people feel quite proud of themselves when they make it across. That they think they they really conquered something. Stan Joseph's grand uncle, Chief Matthias, who helped to build the original bridge, was also a father, and created many of these totem poles. The years took their toll, and in the 1980s, Stan offered to restore those that were falling down. My heritage is I'm a Squamish. Indian band member, and I live on the Capilano Indian Reserve. Uh, part of my background is Simshian, which I carve in, and I carve in Salish style, which is a uh, Squamish nation. My granduncle, Chief Matthias, carved here, and the first bridge that was built here, uh, my ancestor, Katsalano, which is Capilano after that, right? Uh, they helped them build the first bridge. One day I walked in here during Expo year, and all my granduncle's totem poles were falling down. So uh, they hired me as a restorer of his artifacts. Can you tell me how you read the totem? You look at the top, and you recognize the main family crest, uh, like Thunderbird. Then you would look at the designs on it. This is a totem pole, um, my grandmother's father. And he was a chief of the Simshian Nass, Nass River area. Uh, starting from the top here, um, this whole part here is a headdress, um, which is the Eagle Clan. And these points here, in the old days, like I've used cedar sticks here, but in the old days they used walrus whiskers, uh, which represented potlatches that a chief had had in his life. And coming a little bit lower here, here's the face here. And the eyes are always in this position because uh, uh, Indians in the old days had a very spiritual um, respect for nature and that. So uh, the eyes are never open, like a, a native would never look you in the eye. We have a blanket which is wrapped around him and which has uh, an eagle crest on it, which is carved out in red and black. Uh, in Simshian, in the Salish way, red represents life and black represents the spirit world because we believe that we came from the spirit world, from the spirit world here to earth. Some of the poles in the grounds here, you'll see they'll have uh, white, red, black, and green, um, and yellow on it, which I recognize right away as Kwakutl, um, which, is a, which is south of uh, the Haida and the Tsimshian. And then you come a bit lower when you see blue, blue, red, green, and black involved in it, then you know it's Bellacula, which is a uh, southern Kwakutl. Thankfully, the pigment-making process is not what it used to be. In the old days, the, for the white they used uh, crushed clam shells, and for the reds they used berries and uh, salmon eggs, and for the black they used uh, what we call devil's club, which is a plant that they burnt and uh, mixed with uh, deer marrow. And the brown was, was used from either a rock or old cedar stumps that they would take and, and rub it and uh, mix it with deer, deer marrow or uh, fish slime, and then they would apply that to it. They must have been quite um, pungent reminders of who lived in the yeah. house at times. Yeah. Well, you, you know that you, you ran into a pole when you were about a half a mile away. So. <laughs> For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.